It's Artemis Launch Control with an update. Launch Director Charlie Blackwell Thompson has called a scrub. Uh, NASA's Artemis program is uh, the program that will be um, leading us to the moon. When it launches, Artemis 1 will orbit the moon for six weeks without any crew on board. The next small step towards astronauts like Jessica Watkins returning to the lunar surface. Being a space is certainly something that I dreamed about um, from a pretty young age. I'm not sure it was ever something that I thought would, would really come to fruition and actually um, happen, but it is um, a true privilege and an honor to be able to be here today. We spoke with Watkins this summer as she made history aboard the International Space Station as the first black woman on a long-duration mission. I think this, this kind of milestone um, comes comes as a result of and, and as a tribute to um, the the um, women astronauts and the black women astronauts uh, who came before me and laid the foundation. It is also a testimony, uh, testament to the exciting future ahead. Watkins is one of the select group of astronauts tapped to be part of the Artemis crew. But that future for Watkins and NASA doesn't end with the moon. I certainly look forward to uh, the day that, that humans set foot on Mars. Um, for me personally, I am a, a planetary geologist, and I did uh, most of my research on, on Mars and looking at the geology of the surface of Mars. We certainly are excited about going forward to the moon as kind of a stepping stone towards Mars. We can build, um, develop and build technologies that will help get us um, towards Mars and um, help create some of those operational pathways as well. Um, we can learn a lot from, from having an outpost on the moon um, that I think will allow us to get closer and closer to Mars. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The landscape for space travel today much different than during the Apollo program. I am so excited to partner with SpaceX in this fantastic endeavor. Going head to head with competitors like Jeff Bezos's Blue Origin, Elon Musk's SpaceX won the bidding war to be NASA's private partner for Artemis, a $2.9 billion contract. As these partnerships test new boundaries in the new billionaire space race, it remains to be seen if the Artemis launch will lead to another giant leap for mankind. But it might for Watkins and others following in her footsteps. There is no manual. There is no. Uh, there are no check boxes um, that that have to be done in order to be here. We just want you <laughs> and um, find something that you're passionate about and just continue to pursue that relentlessly um, and continue to dream big. Uh, you never know um, when those dreams will come true. And for more on today's developments, joining me from the Kennedy Space Center is NBC News correspondent Jake Ward. Jake, nice to see you. We're sorry we didn't get to see a launch today, but obviously safety comes first on these things. Have we gotten new information on the issues, the engine issues that led to this launch being canceled? Well, Peter, we did. We learned that the RS-25 engines, there's four of them on this rocket, uh, one of them basically could not be cooled enough. And if I can just geek out for a second on how amazing it is, <laughs> these engines. I mean, they have a combination of hydrogen and oxygen in liquefied forms. You've got to hold that at a negative 200 degree Fahrenheit uh, temperature in the case of oxygen, negative 400 degrees Fahrenheit in hydrogen. And at that temperature, they boil. So that's why you see the crazy steam uh, the gas coming out of the rocket as they hold them in this boiling condition. Anyway, we sat here for a while watching that, thinking about that as they struggled to figure out why they couldn't get that third of four engines cool enough to take off. And here's the thing, Peter, those engines are monstrous, right? It's the RS-25 literally goes from zero to 17,000 miles an hour in eight and a half seconds. So you can't mess around with that. And the, the decision here by NASA seems to have been, we'd rather be safe than sorry, so they're going to try, uh, try again later, Peter. Yeah, of course, that makes sense. The next launch window, as we've been reporting, is this Friday. Is there any better indication if they'll be ready by then? Is that enough time to get this done? And I guess thereafter, what are the other potential dates? What sort of horizon are they playing with here? Right. Well, as you know, it's an extraordinarily complex thing to put this kind of thing into space. You need the moon and the Earth to be in the proper position relative to one another. And it turns out there's a lunar eclipse over the course of this week, and the Orion uh, spacecraft requires solar power. That's why they can't launch it before Friday. But the big question at the moment is, can they fix this problem on the launch pad, or do they have to roll this thing, this 30-story building, that's what this spaceship is, all the way back to the building you see behind me and fix 
fix it in the garage here. If that's the case, then it's unlikely we'll see it go Friday. It could be. They're not ruling out the possibility, uh, but, you know, not a, not a sure thing, certainly. Then the next possible launch window is Monday, Labor Day, uh, but the forecast doesn't look great there. At that point, we're looking probably at middle of September, and if it doesn't go then, we're looking into October and beyond. NASA says they're willing to be patient. As one associate administrator put it on Twitter today, he said, we will launch when we're ready, Peter. Yeah, it all makes good sense. Well, we hope to see it soon, but certainly want it to happen successfully and safely when it happens. Jake Ward there at NASA for us. Jake, thank you so much for your reporting and for geeking out. We're always grateful. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.